Greece. You're known as, I think, one of the first Americans to play tibia. The GMs definitely. There was a, a couple of them that didn't didn't like me. Chat. Oh, I see. Okay, so we do that. Interesting. Alrighty then. Oh, welcome to Slainville episode two. I'm your host, Uncle Cellphone, and today we're gonna do a bunch of different interesting things. We got Galleon, we got more fiascos, we got lots of good stuff coming up. So, uh, let's jump right into it. So, um, the first thing I want to say is like, I continue to be absolutely terrible at making the houses. Uh, every house I make like bugs to shit. Uh, but, I, you know, I do my best and I do keep fixing them as time goes on. Um, and I think uh, Mr. Grinchy's house is now fully complete, like a week late, but doing the best I can. Um, so, uh, one of the topics I want to get into is just like the overall, like the pace of development. I'm slowing down like way a lot, not necessarily like that I'm not doing as much, but like the things I'm doing, I'm taking my time with a lot more, like, because it's it's not just like fixing little NPC bugs anymore, you know, it's stuff like how do creatures behave or like PVP damage. It's like you saw that, that bug I made when I tried to fix the distance thing. We'll talk about it later. It's like I broke all of PVE distance. So it's like, I gotta chill, I gotta test stuff. I gotta take my time because I'm, working on harder problems, you know? So, um, stuff like the stair hopping, uh, we'll talk about, and it's like, these are just such complex problems when you compare them to like, you know, oh, I, I can't buy the spell I want. You know, like that stuff I can fix literally without testing it. I can fix 30 or 40 of those types of bugs every day, but I already did, so they're, they're fixed. So now we're on like much more intricate stuff. Um, so, um, you know, and, and really what I learned is that, like, I tried to move fast with that stuff and I just kept, like, doing things that I ended up wanting to revert or reverting. And so then I realized, like, okay, I gotta take my time and think about these things, talk about them with uh, other developers and, and, you know, just slow down. So, um, on that topic, the stair hopping thing is like, this is something I've been testing for like three or four days at least. If, I mean, really going back months, but but especially focusing on a lot in the past week. And so like, the first thing I did was I was like, oh, I should just make it so, um, you know, you have to teleport into demons or whatever. And that kind of like solved the problem a little bit by just avoiding the problem. But then like when you really dig into it and you look at it, it's like, okay, well, what is actually going wrong here? Like, obviously you've always been able to go up and down a set of stairs. So there's nothing wrong with just being able to use stairs. Um, so what is really the bug? And so the more I thought about it, the deeper I looked at it, what I realized that the real bug is that uh, when you go back up the stairs away from the creature, the creature is supposed to keep running all the way to the bottom of the stairs. So that that way the next time you go back down the stairs, it's just right there. And it kind of eliminates the whole process because, uh, you know, like it's a demon and you're a paladin. It's like, you you have to be able to block that creature. Like, you're gonna take 750 damage one time when you go back down the stairs. And so that kind of just like negates it. And it's the same thing with Behemoths or the Black Knight. Uh, the Black Knight, like when you go back up those stairs, back into the Black Knight, you should be facing around 600 damage. If you're not, that's a bug. Um, and for Behemoths, I think the number is more like 550 or 600 um, because they can melee you. All these things can melee you and throw something at you or whatever. Uh, I think a demon can hit you for like 420 with a GED and melee for you for up to like 390 or something so it can really it should be able to just wipe a lot of characters um anyway so uh with the creature ai they should be right down there when you get to the bottom of the steps and what we realized is that not at all how it works what it does is it actually takes about a half a second to even start coming towards you and then the second you disappear he just it just starts dancing around in a random direction 
And so, um, a random direction, um, you know, at first I thought, okay, well, it's going in a random direction, that's not so bad. And then I, you know, if you really think about it, if the creature has a chance to run in four directions, probably only one of those directions is towards you. So realistically, the creature has a 75% chance of running away from you, which benefits you, and a 25% chance each time it moves, of moving towards you. So what this adds up to is that when you go back up the stairs, they're dancing away from you. It's not what we would call like, you know, random motion with respect to you because of what I described. So um, it all adds up to the fact that this is like severely bugged. And so uh, my first thought was like, oh, I'll just go in and I'll just like find a quick way to make it so the creature runs all the way to wherever it was going. Uh, and so that was like a thousand times harder than I thought because these things actually have to calculate their new path every tile. So they actually only ever calculate one tile of path. And so the end result is that when you reserve, remove their target, they just stop. I don't know if this is the way old Tibia works, but it's like deeply ingrained in our system. So um, rather than like spend weeks and weeks on this single problem that probably I would break all creature AI, um, I tried to do a couple things that were like just little tweaks. Absolutely none of them work. Um, I tried to make it so they just don't dance around when you're plus one or minus one. Uh, but they're so fucking stupid that um, if they don't dance, they also take like an extra two seconds to start running towards you. So they really just, you, you could stair hop them and they would just never move. So that didn't work either, you know? So this is all just getting to the point of like, you know, I'm hitting these harder problems, trying to focus more deeply and more intently on them. Uh, and what I'm realizing is, you know, that they aren't as easy to, easy to solve. And like, it's one of those things where you actually learn the wisdom of something you revered a long time ago. So what I learned is that like, actually the best system is just to increase the stair exhaust, which is what we started with for, to begin with. The way uh, the server started out was with two second stair exhaust. And so um, the argument against that was that, um, it like would be cancer if you're like trying to run away from someone higher level than you. Uh, but what I realized is that, that this exhaust, the stair exhaust, it's only for attacking. It's not for healing. You can go down the stairs and immediately you have a lux or heal. You just can't shoot an SD or a bull. So this, the problem was already solved and we fucked it up by thinking we had the wisdom to remove uh, the stair exhaust. So all that uh, being said, where we start from is uh, we had a 200 millisecond, 0.2 second stair exhaust. That was how we've had it for the past like three months. Um, originally it was two seconds, so 2000 milliseconds. I've increased it from 200 milliseconds to 750. So it's still less than half of the, the, two, the two seconds, um, but I think that this is like a perfect medium where you're gonna have to be able to tank some hits and stick around for a minute if you're trying to stair hop. Maybe it should be go up to one second, but we'll just see how this feels. Um, but really it's more of like a microcosm of the larger thing, which is like, you know, slowing down. Um, uh, small changes are Royal Paladins. I think I wanted them to be able to do this, but I fucked it up. Uh, but they should be able to make fireball runes. Now, the, the, you could buy the spell, but then it wouldn't let you cast that. That should take. Um, so another thing that I tried to change and then uh, was kind of fucked was... Uh, so, this is like the subject of a little bit of controversy. If you care, you can find the Pianzo thread on it on OT Land. But um, basically, all of modern Tibia... Um, at, at least as far back as anybody's ever really given a shit to calculate anything, distance is not affected by shield in PvP. So, if you're wearing a great shield or a wooden shield, bolts are, they don't care. The bolt damage ignores the defense of your shield. Um, which means it actually also ignores uh, your shielding skill. 
So your shielding skill and the defense of your shield are completely irrelevant to bolts, arrows, shooting stars, anything that would involve training or PvP from a paladin with listing. Um, so what's interesting is that like most people just immediately off the bat are like, that sounds wrong. That sounds like it doesn't make any sense and it's stupid. Like armor is already not that consequential in this game. Finding a way to just remove defense for mattering as well is like extremely counterproductive to anybody who thinks items should matter, um, which is everybody. So, um, if you read the thread, Pianto actually proves with old footage, he proves that this did matter a long time ago. Um, so, uh, you know, with these two combined facts, which is that it did matter and, you know, it's stupid. Um, I went in and I was like, okay, I can, you know, just make it matter. Uh, it's not that complicated. But the problem with this is that, uh, so like, it's sort of baked into, like when I made shield count for uh, distance, it worked instantly for PvP and it was fine. But the problem is that like, because of this, the way PvP is calculated, is that like a demon has 300 shield. And so then once that was used in the PvP, you just couldn't hit a demon at all. You couldn't hit a behemoth at all. And I, I think even like a dwarf soldier has like, 90 defense so the way it worked out was that um it just broke the math for pve and i had to revert it so um like you know next time i go in and i try to make this change what i'm gonna have to do is make it so i do this thing where i introduce defense as mattering but i carve out that this change i'm doing only applies to pvp so like um it's just another example of like the fast, quick, dirty solutions need to be a little bit more well thought out. So I built this, it broke some stuff, I had to revert it. I think uh, basically the end result in the real Slainville is that uh, I broke distance for about 75 minutes, you know, after server save one night and it fucked some people and, you know, it, it, it's annoying. Um, so I'll try to avoid that. Uh, so recent fiascos, now that we get into it, we've got the uh, the GM is on GM Island allegations. I don't know if I'll ever be able to uh, escape that. Uh, apparently there were some sort of allegations that I was in night watch room. I don't know what that even means. I wrote this down. A lot of, lot of um, just crazy conspiracy theories about us and also just like insane abusive dms stalking behavior obsessive behavior and cheating behavior from like one specific group of people um all those people are gone like uh the, it reached a point where uh they started abusing like people who are volunteers for slainville like if you're gonna start messaging people who work for slainville for free essentially and like you know abusing them then you're gone you're just fucking gone there's there's like a hard cut off at that line uh sorry um uh dun, 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 dun. and not only that but it's gonna be like if you're even remotely connected to that if i can't tell if you're connected to that it doesn't matter you're gone um because at the end of the day why who cares i'm not dealing with that uh do, 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 do. Oh, we did, uh, we do have Novak leaving his councilness. uh, basically, I think you guys all know that he was at one point a GM, and then he kind of stayed on as, like, council, um, even though he wasn't a GM, and so now he's just kind of not doing that either, um, he's super busy, it's not a big deal, um, but whatever, um, do, 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 do. Oh yeah, we have the uh, the new Boondock Saints Guild. Uh, I think we wanted to extend a formal welcoming. Like if you're in one of these guilds that was disbanded and you're like, hey, what the hell? I used to have people to play with and I don't really know what the drama is, but my guild is gone. Just message Galeon. I'm sure he'll be welcoming. There's like plenty of guilds, Red Rose. Um, just feel free to reach out if you feel like you know you logged in and the, all the communities you know, that you were in are changed. I'm sure people are 
you know, happy to play with you and stuff. Uh, do do do. Let's see. So we got the JJ interview coming up. Uh, that is really interesting. One thing we talked about is we talked about the kind of like uh, character trading and experience exchange thing. And uh, at the time of the conversation, I didn't even realize, but somebody who is doing some character trading is like literally buying up toxic okay, people to like help get them out. So we get the and then he's distributing the characters to other people. It's like an extremely selfless thing I think he's doing. So add that on to context on top of what we talk about later where, you know, maybe there was some discussion of, well, is this kind of like good for the server or not? And it's like when you add into the fact that they're literally buying these characters and then giving them away, it's like exclusively the purpose is just to get rid of the assholes. So fuck it. Um, and that's not the only purpose, but whatever. You know, sorry, I shouldn't be so mean. People are not assholes. They're just, they're just fellows. Um, anywho, so I guess without further ado, we are going to get into the JJ the Galleon interview. Um, excuse me for yapping up to this point, and double excuse me for the amount of yapping that I'm about to do in this interview. The classic doo doo. Gotta have it. Gotta have it. Um, okay. You know what's funny is that I honestly do not know the answer to the first question, which is to say, uh, hello, Galleon. Introduce yourself. What is your first name? <laughs> My name is Josh, and uh, pretty much everybody calls me JJ. Right. Yeah, Josh. I, I, when you say Josh, I can remember it, but gun to my head, I wouldn't have been able to, like, under pressure, there's no way I could produce Josh. That's a pretty forgettable name. Well, it's just that JJ has been JJ for a billion years. Um, what is your country of origin? Uh, America. Um... So, uh, the first, like, intro question I have here is, um, you're, and to me at least, you're known as, I think, one of the first Americans to play Tibia. So I'm curious what the story is that brought you to become a Tibia player, how you found it. Uh, basically I'd played Ultima 6 on my computer when I was, like, slightly younger than when I started Tibia. And one day I was looking through like a free online game list or whatever around page like 50 or something. I saw a game that looked exactly like uh, Ultima 6. So I decided to check it out and I'm saw that it was like a... Because when I started playing, which was at least three years later, there was a huge language barrier for me because most of the players were German or Swedish, but there were a few American players and I could kind of click up with them. When you started playing, you must have been the only person speaking English except maybe, I guess, a few British players. Did you play with them? Uh, no, actually, like, most of the Euros spoke English. It's just uh, whether or not they would actually speak it to you. Like, a lot of them know how to speak English. They just you know, may or may not feel like doing it. Oh, so you had to prove yourself <laughs> to the Euros. Yeah, I think most of them really didn't care for the, like Americans in general. So like, depending on the day, you may or may not get a response in English or you might get something in German and they basically just ignore you or whatever. That's interesting. So that, yeah, oh, because it's like they could... The moment you speak English, you essentially out yourself as being probably American, although you could be yeah. British, yeah. Um, that's very interesting. Um, so I'm curious what, uh, this is the same question I asked Aries, was like, what were your hobbies? It seems like you went from Ultima to Tibia, but like, what were your hobbies before computer gaming as like a young child? Uh, just typical, like, 80s kid shit, just going outside, playing in the mud, I don't know, like, playing baseball, stuff like that. Did you have the... You, you, <laughs> I grew up in the time where it was, every everything was, uh, go outside and play. Right, yeah. Like, 
parent parents didn't want to deal with kids, so they uh, just sent you out on your own. Yeah, back when kids were not respected. <laughs> back I, when there was uh, no streaming services or iPads to keep kids busy. Yeah. I consider myself to be somebody who grew up right on the border between the time between when kids were like forgotten, like you didn't want, nobody cared about kids to then after my childhood, I feel like children are the most important focal point of society. And I feel like people like us who grew up as unimportant are extremely different from the people who grew up as important. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, personally, I, I never felt unimportant, like, when I was a kid. My parents, like, weren't that bad, but, you know, everyone, it, it's, it was just the typical thing, like, hey, go outside and play, like, you know, I'm doing right. stuff. Yeah, that the, you were, you know, like, there were other neighborhood kids, and you were, you know, part of, I don't know, it's just that your parents weren't so deeply involved in your in your life, you know? Yeah, I mean, I lived in kind of a rural, rural area, so, like, I had to ride my bike probably like half a mile to get to like the nearest like kid that I knew or whatever. So, Oh, that's cool. Um, Grew up in the cornfields. Ooh, that's scary. You ever get lost? Uh, no. (laughs) So you just found Tibby on a website. That's, uh, I think that's the same way my friend found it. Um, probably the same website. That one that was like free MMOs.com. I remember that one. Yeah, it was um, something similar. Uh, I remember it was like right at the same time I learned about Tibia, RuneScape, and like, or maybe not RuneScape, but like several other similar games. And Tibia was actually like the most graphically advanced of them. <laughs> and that's why I picked it. It's like, oh, this game is actually a game, it's not text. <laughs> Um, yeah, I know Ultima Online came out like ar- around the same time as Tibia, but actually a little bit later. Mm-hmm. And uh, I probably would have played that, except it, I think it had like a monthly subscription kind of thing. And uh, back then, parents weren't like trying to give their credit cards out to kids mm-hmm. to like <laughs> buy shit on the internet. Absolutely. I had a rich friend. Uh, well, not rich, but you know, whatever. Uh, who he his family did pay for Ultima Online for him, and I remember thinking like, "Wow, I could never get my mom to give me eight dollars." Uh, right. So yeah, let's do some Slainville questions, and I'll try to interrupt less. Um, so yeah. I'm curious your thoughts on what? the Hakendon death to the bear trap. You know, right into the the juicy drama. The death to the bear trap and the refund and the reaction and all that. Uh, anything like specific to it or? Well, maybe even just like a little bit of your idea of what happened. And then we'll get into opinions on it maybe. Yeah, I don't know. He, it's, it's hard to say without... Like he he pretty much didn't uh, disclose a lot of information about what was going on at the time. So without like any of his input, it's just speculation. But it seems like he had also got tired of you know these guys fucking around here and like making the, the game kind of difficult for everybody. So like he was on the bandwagon of also like killing them or doing whatever. Well, what I meant was, uh, like, just the facts of what happened, like, starting just from, like, he, how he died and, and... Yeah, I mean, that's what I was getting to, is, like, the fact that he was kind of on the bandwagon of killing those guys, so, like, he, he got drawn in to, uh, <laughs> you know, chasing them around Carlin or wherever it happened. Right. Yeah, the, I didn't really know too much of the specifics either. I, I, yeah, I think you're right, is that he got, he got jabated... A little bit is what yeah, I heard. It that like it. He he kind of ate up the bait because, I mean, in my opinion, it's, I think these guys all very fairly were hungry for PvP that they kind of thought would be there and then realized, you know, oh, wait, we're on a, a server with a bunch of friends. And so then everybody is kind of just like, well, I want to kill somebody, but I know everybody. And so when there was a chance for PvP, it was very easy to sort of... Uh, put a carrot on a stick and set up a trap, you know? 
Yeah, and it also you know didn't hurt that they were <laughs> immediately talking about how they're gonna you know ruin the server at the start when they joined before they even made characters and then expecting to just come in and play like with no pushback at all. Yeah, I, I thought it was very funny and telling of like how little they understood the difference between like you could probably go into uh, the server Dura and talk shit like that and then play because you know maybe there's 5,000 accounts and you're kind of like you can get lost in a sea of people. And it's so obvious the people that don't understand that we don't have that many players. So it's like you can very easily know exactly who every single person is. So you have to operate a lot differently. You know, you can't just, there's no getting lost in the sea or hiding who you are or any of this stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, giving the plan away as the villain never works out. So I don't understand uh, <laughs> why you would do it in the first place. <laughs> That's a very good point. They did like the Dr. Evil thing of being like, yeah. we will come for you. So, okay. Well, I guess you, uh, <laughs> you're not going to make it very far then. That's a very good point. Um, so then he, he goes in and he steps on, uh, you know, honestly, uh, I don't know, but probably many, many, maybe a hundred bear traps that would do, I think, 3,000 damage. So it one shots him. So I'm curious, uh, just somebody other than me's perspective of this bug and its existence in the real, well, I mean, is it a bug and did it ever or d should it exist in real tibia, etc., that kind of thing? I would consider it a bug for sure. Like I, I'm sure Sipsoft never had any intention of allowing something like that to happen in the first place. It's probably something they just never thought about. Like no one who, who's going to drag like five backpacks or, you know, more of traps, set them and then push them on top of each other and try, try to fucking like get somebody to walk on them. That's like, that's not the type of gameplay that they were like expecting to come from like adding something like a trap to the game. I don't think. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear too that uh, you know just knowing anything about game design in general would lead you to believe that you know maybe this isn't good. But um, I I'm curious if you have any memory of this because I have a memory that this bug existed for about a day when uh, traps came out, and that somebody I don't know who but somebody died. I don't know if it was the day that the trap came out. It was probably just like our server. Three months after there was a trap, somebody figured out that you could do this. And then from that moment to the moment of the patch was a day. That's my memory is that somebody did die exactly the way Hakendon did. Yeah, I mean, it usually takes something, uh, something large like that for <laughs> CIP to take notice. Exactly, yeah. And probably somebody with a premium account. Or something. <laughs> yeah, somebody um, paying money for their game definitely uh, might have a factor in it. And uh, I did think it was interesting that somebody somebody pointed out, like, in what fucking world would CIP ever have refunded the EXP for something like that? <laughs> and I, I like, mean, oh, it's not actually unheard of for them to do things like that. The people that they had, like, known in real life or met through the conventions and stuff like that. I mean, they weren't the most uh i don't know moral people either like if everyone's a human you. so you yeah. know that's interesting i'd never heard of anything where they because definitely like you know with items and giveaways for sure they seem to be exceptionally heavy-handed there seems to be a tremendous amount of items that just sort of made their way into the game somehow you know <laughs> and yeah but with refunding EXP or levels, I do feel like my perception is that they always have told people to go fuck themselves in every... Because there were so many server yeah, crashes. Probably to the public-facing like part of it, but uh, it's it's so easy for them to claim, like, a oh, server crash, uh, we had to reset things, like what happened with Wurzel and getting his like experience and E-plate back and everything. Oh... Oh, very so they, so interesting they, comparison. So they, so they could, 
they could easily Go make on. something make up a you know an excuse as to why they had to roll the server back but you know it, it just so happens he he was friends with them and uh you know lost some stuff uh, lost a couple levels and some skills and you know whatever else so by the to a, to a trap that they, that he probably didn't like and they probably also didn't uh, particularly care for even though it wasn't illegal technically speaking so the comparison you're making is incredible because not only do you have a high level knight who's friends with the the server owner or has a relationship with the server owner but then he's killed via a trap and then he gets the levels back due to a reset and then the difference between Hakendin and Wurzel and the loot right true but Hakendin gets very upset about this Wurzel spends the next 20 years of his life like defending the server as a, as a result he loves the corruption but Hakendin is a true honest gentleman you see the difference yeah I'm not sure uh, what you really could have done there like i mean, other than maybe ask him if he wanted the experience back other than instead of just straight refunding it yeah i mean that was the, he literally was just afk and it didn't occur to me that he wouldn't want it and then by the time i realized he didn't want it i think he uh he had already turned to the sith you know <laughs> but that's all right yeah <laughs> so what's the next thing on uh so um oh yeah yeah well yeah, who wants to uh, oh, here's here's a question that I have. I don't know if maybe this is uh, whatever. Uh, so, how do you feel about like the general idea of like the getting exp from kills, and is it is there too much experience being transferred by uh, by kills, and does it create a negative impact on the game? I think no, but I'm curious what other people. It kind of depends on the situation. Like, I don't... Like, for general PvP purposes, I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing that you get experience for, like, killing your enemies. But for, like... Say someone buys a character and then kills it down and power levels another character with it, uh, that's kind of a different situation, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I can understand how, as a player... If you are not the one who bought it, you're like, oh, well, that kind of, this guy is getting a leg up. But, like, I don't know. It doesn't really seem to have any negative impact on the server because it's like you take somebody who was going to quit anyway and you kind of, like, recycle them into the ecosystem. It's almost like, you know, it's like when a tree dies and then it gets reabsorbed. As it falls down, it gets reabsorbed into the earth, you know, as it decays. It's like... Uh, yeah. <laughs> there's the, the, a cycle the earth, to it. Earth, did, earth didn't pay the tree for the character, though. Well, you know, the, the, in a way. Um... It's, I, I don't necessarily have, like, I don't have a big problem with it, but it can be easily construed as, like pay to win circumventing like you in the process if, right. if you get what i'm saying because it's just as much from your perspective it's pay to win it, like uh, uh as you being the player who isn't doing it and then somebody else is doing it from your perspective it's the same thing as as pay to win the only difference is that i'm not making money yeah exactly it, you're not selling levels but you know someone is buying levels basically interesting that is a very interesting but, but again i don't i don't have that big of a problem with it i can just see i can see how other people would have a problem with it like you yeah know. i i think it creates uh like a little bit of drama and i think that's good so i like it i think it's interesting it gives people something to talk about uh because at the end of the day uh one thing i noticed is that somebody did it recently and um I was very happy with how much exp they didn't get too much out of it. So I felt like at the end of the day, it's not really a big deal because it's not crazy. It's tweaked, right? I think. Um, and it gives people something to talk about. Um, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't scale to a ridiculous amount of, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so here's, Oh, so I want to ask you about uh, like the server and the players and burnout. 
And I think you have a unique perspective because you kind of took like a one week break, like probably a month before everybody else. And so I feel like every you got to watch everybody else melt down while you were like not you were kind of like in a refreshed state of not having burnout and everybody else around you all burnt out at the exact moment so I'm curious what that was like. Yeah, I mean I had my own kind of meltdown in the first place that's why I took took the week off. But it was uh, every day that I didn't play was honestly it remi- it it made me think of someone who's like addicted to crack and what they might go through. Like I all I did was sit at my computer and stare at my screen and want to open the fucking app and play the game or the program or whatever. But I like you know tried to stick with it. I took all, I basically took like four days off. It wasn't like even a full week. Damn, so you but think uh, other players are going through that right now. It's definitely possible. Like, depend. I don't know how how many people like vary their hunting areas, but like, I specifically have been hunting like Plains of Havoc since like level twenty, and nothing else really. So it does get boring after a while because there's no like variation in what you're doing. Right. Yeah. I mean, so that's that's kind of like related to a question I would ask, which is like. How much content should I add to the map? Do you like when I add content to the map? And if so, what kind of stuff would you suggest to counter this boredom or lack of stuff to do? Uh, I do like when you add content, as long as I'm not the one that finds it first and like you know runs into a, something stupid and I'm gonna like die because of it. Which I I don't feel like anything you've added has like ended up quite like that, because there there's usually like a level of protection in between. Like you can see what's going to happen if you go down to the next level, and there's like demons there. Right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Generally speaking, it's it's been pretty good. I haven't actually got to do like most of the new places you've added because of like my. Uh, temporary new sleep schedule where I'm like awake during the day and most of the hunts go on at night after I've already gone to bed. Well, I mean, it's good sleep schedule. I wouldn't hate that. Yeah, I mean, that's that's changing basically this weekend. I'm going back to nights again, so it's, it'll be it'll be fun again. Well, I think that you're getting at something there. So one of the things I've heard people say is like uh, a lot of the content or really even maybe my focus is like almost exclusively on promoting team hunts and it's like that's totally dead on accurate true it's what i love to do but there's probably like if you're just trying to play solo especially on a paladin there really isn't much to do beyond the plane to havoc i think and i think that there needs to be something and especially at your level it's like you're really gonna have to do planes of havoc until you're able Eternity. to well until you can solo three dragon lords. Yeah, that's the problem is there's no uh there's not a lot of open running areas for paladins, I guess. The, like most things are in caves underground, there's not a lot of space to run around and it's I mean it's doable, but at the at that point it's like more difficult than it's worth in a lot of cases. Mm-hmm. When you're making, as like when I'm making new hunting areas and I'm thinking about it, basically, like one way to think about it is like it's really easy to accidentally make something that is just free experience for paladins. So, a lot of what you're thinking about is just like, how do I make this hard or how do I make this an enclosed area? How do I take away the way the ability for like a level 20 paladin to kite this? And so I think that you can sometimes over-focus on that and leave nothing for the paladins who need that space. Um, yeah, I mean, you can... It, it's, I mean, development is, isn't easy. So, I mean, when you, you're trying to develop an area like that, you have to 
make the monsters dense enough that it's not easy for them to run around, but not so dense that they can't do it. And also not so dense that the experience is ridiculous if they can do it. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of balance you have to like think about while you're trying to create an area like that. I have some stuff that I'm working on that will be really good for like level 100 plus paladins, which we're going to have eventually. But I think that this low, this, the, the, it's like the 50 to 100 paladin, there's like really nothing for you until you can just wipe Venor dragons. But that's not easy on a paladin, right? Yeah, I'm not really super familiar with that spawn. Uh, I may have gone there once or twice, like, I don't know, 10 years after I quit playing Tibia. You think, have you been to Deeper Fibula on our server? Uh, not on the server, no. We should uh, we should see what that's like for a paladin near range. Um, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I saw I saw I saw that, like Shibby made a, a short video about deeper fibula, and it made me wonder if I could uh, run through there. Yeah, I want to watch that. He sent me two videos. Um, I didn't actually like watch the well. I did watch it, but I couldn't really see it because <laughs> I tried to watch it on my phone. When I turned it like sideways, it didn't like change the aspect ratio. Um, so here's another question I have is, uh, if I had just never banned or gotten involved with the OT Raider people at all, do you think we would, like, what, what would the server look like now if we just, like, let them run amok as crazy as we, like, we wanted? Or they wanted? Uh, most likely the online list would be, like, five people <laughs> playing their mains if they're playing at all. Right, because people like I, yeah. I mean, you basically already you could already see like the levels dip for like any, any time there's a flare up where they show up and start killing AFKers. Like everyone gets notice and just stops AFKing, so there's like not a lot of people on. Because like during the day, you know, most people are at work and they're you know just trying to get some kind of gains out of it while they're being productive in real life. Yeah. Um, some people aren't productive in real life, so they, you know, <laughs> want to come here and cause problems for the people that are. Amen. Yeah, I, I think the same way. I think that our community is too small and fragile for uh, pure chaos to be just injected, like, at random, you know? Uh, if the switch were always on, if it was always chaos, then it would be one thing, but the on and I mean, off again too much to, to some extent they probably would have got what they wanted which was to ruin the server in the first place like it it was already kind of heading in that direction it seemed like yeah a lot of people like starting to quit or at least log on less and i don't know yeah it, it's hard i think people don't understand that um you know a community of fifteen thousand people can almost thrive off of the chaos it's like when you see people quit it kind of makes you double down but that's the same dynamics don't apply to a community of 35 or 135 or 200 people you know like no you make you make a few people quit and then it's just over like the server is dead exactly because once 40 or 50 percent of people quit they actually take the other half with them so yeah, I was gonna say the worst part is like even after they run all the people off, they don't continue to play the server either. They just their their intent is literally just to come here and make other people quit so that they can <laughs> they can be happy with it, and then they just yeah. go on to like the next OT to ruin. It's funny because we used to do I used to do basically this exact same thing in Rust, but Rust is very different because it resets entirely, you know, every one to four weeks. So it's like. You, when you ruin a server or destroy it, it's like you're actually bringing drama to the server, and then it's gonna reset. And so it's like you're you're helping even if you're hurting, you know. Um, whereas yeah, and it's not a big loss because, like you said, it's just gonna be reset mm -hmm. in a week or two anyway. Yeah, and then even if it's like you get ran off the server entirely, now you're hyper motivated to come back next time and fuck those guys back up and get your revenge, you know. Um, yeah, and then it it just breeds more contempt between the players and then it'll just keep going it'll like escalate 
like endlessly until someone gets tired of doing it pretty much because it like you said it wipes so they can start over fresh at the same time the other people are every time i have a question from uh, uh wild bill he says what is the most interesting thing in all your years playing tibia you've ever seen uh that's a vague question i guess interesting is I mean, there's a lot of interesting things i don't know a lot of interesting things um well what's the most interesting thing you've seen that is like out of game like a relationship type thing you know like a human thing not an in-game event uh I'm not sure if i get the question like, have you ever heard of anybody getting married because of Tibia? Oh, not Tibia spe uh, specifically, but like personally, I I got married to someone I met on World of Warcraft after we quit Amera. Wait, you personally? Yep. So, quitting Amera led you to play World of Warcraft. Yeah, I followed Matt or Slain to uh, a server called Zuljin. And that's basically where I met my wife. That is amazing. Even that is Tibia based in a way. Yeah, because if I didn't know Matt, I would never have played there. So. And if CIP wasn't so fucking terrible at managing their game, you would have never met your wife. Well, I mean, we kind of <laughs> helped uh, manage ourselves off that server. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. I managed myself straight into a deletion on that one, actually. Oh, yeah? I don't know if I remember that. Yeah, I was actually one of... Epic was one of the last people yeah. to be actually, like... Like, very shortly after Epic, getting deleted was, like, an automated system that was, like, resulted as a number of bans or something like that. But I was one of the last people to be hand-selected by CIP, by, like, one of the four guys. Wait, what did you do? So, um... I just killed everybody on Amera for like six months. My thing was, uh, I really just wanted an excuse to kill as many people as possible. And so I came up yeah. with this idea that spamming the trade channel was like a punishable offense because you used to be able to just spam into the trade channel. They didn't have the once every two minutes rule. Yeah. And so I just kill, I would just say in the trade channel, I would say, do not spam this channel. Or I will kill you. <laughs> and then whoever, I would just open the trade channel and whoever was spamming, I would just go kill them. Um, That's a pretty classic kill reason. <laughs> because, yeah, I could just log in and there's a built-in excuse and I'm the trade channel enforcer. Uh, and so eventually they banned me and then they banned me and then they deleted me for Mass King. Yeah, and then, I, I literally uh, saw Slain kill somebody for wearing the same colored shoes as him once. <laughs> But that was his reason. But they made after they deleted me, they made they fucking changed the rule for the trade channel. So I won. I mean, you did leave a, an impact at least. <laughs> I have two impacts that and me and Ziggy uh, summoned four fire elementals each and killed like a HK training camp. And the next day was the two summons rule. So. Those are my my two impacts on Tibia are the trade channel rule and the the summons limit. That's why Slainville has the no summons limit. It's because the limit is because of me. Yeah, I mean we used uh, CIP's rule against them as a reason to murder people with the whole white skull <laughs> fiasco. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> That's basically well, like why we got run off that server. Like we ran around the countryside <laughs> killing anybody we came across with a white skull while they were training because they were white skulled. Yeah, I mean, what an idiotic system! It's like, <laughs> yeah, free kill. Uh, sure, why not? I think at one point during that part, wasn't it like you could just kill a white skull and you didn't even get a PZ lock, right? That I don't specifically remember it might have been the case but but there was no consequence whatsoever mm -hmm. like i mean you didn't you didn't get any kind of uh mark against your character or anything like that like you just kill them take their loot and go about your day <laughs> and i mean we were in a position where we were like basically the highest levels on the server at the time so like <laughs> we, we, no one was really going to be able to do anything about it 
<laughs> oh my god very interesting um so what is my next question i have okay so uh okay so my first question is how many people do you think know who hokuten is uh the guild itself or it's like individual members or well anybody who's ever heard of hokuten I'm sure Rainy helped us out with that one. Uh, I honestly am not even sure prior to his video, like who would have known who, who Hokuten was, but I wonder how many, do you know how many views the Rainy video has on YouTube? Uh, not off the top of my head, but I would have to guess at least like a you know, hundred, couple hundred thousand. Wait, at least. what? Yeah. It's got 300,000 views. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So my guess would be at least 300,000. Uh, well, the fact that 300,000 people clicked that means, you know, and shared it and, you know, they knew it's like, it's sure, I guess it's possible that a lot of people learned about this from the videos, but it seems to me like the reason there was a lot of people who watched it were be was because they know the history. Yeah. And if you look at all the comments, it's like a player from 2001 here actually so sad to think there will never be another game like this or you know it's people who are like yeah i went off to college in 01 um all these people commenting are people who knew about it so i would say there's probably a million people who know this stuff and only 30 percent of them even watch the video eh, i wouldn't i probably wouldn't go quite that high but it's it's possible that there's uh more more that know about it than actually bothered to like watch the video or even knew the video existed for that matter how many people oh, this is such a weird question how many people do you think would describe themselves as fans of hokuten fans of hokuten you said yeah it's an interesting <sighs> question. i don't even remember writing that i would probably say somewhere around 60 or 70 percent of the people that watch the video yeah they might yeah what do uh, yeah i don't i didn't people remember. tend to root for the bad guys i don't know why like to an extent like the the perceived bad guys i i guess you you would say right and and certainly uh hokuten and and matt helped play the part of the heel there that's interesting because we weren't like you know like these guys that were on the server trolling, I mean, no one's going to root for fucking people like that. But, uh, you know, just general, you know, the quote unquote bad guys, like people tend to, for whatever reason, want to see them do well. So it might be like the, because the other side is like kind of righteous and, you know, holier than thou, you know, that kind of thing. So have you ever tried to make any tibia like YouTube content? Not at all. What about? Have you ever tried to stream on Twitch? Uh, other than watching my multi-client AFK trainers right now, uh, no. <laughs> okay, so so yeah, okay, that that doesn't count. Now. Well, I mean, whatever. But um, that's interesting. It's just so, a cheesy way to uh, not have to fill my hard drive. Have you ever had any contact with CIP? In any way, I don't think so. I might have tried to contact them at some point over something that I don't really recall, but right. I'm pretty sure I got the typical like automated denial response. Right. Um, and so definitely, you you know, like Aries War, you have never received any compensation or favor from them in any way. Oh, definitely not. So, and and you would even say probably if anything they had it out for you. I mean, not CIPs specifically. The GMs were oh, sure, a whole other story. Is. I'm a dummy. All right, we good. We uh, good. You're still talking. The the GM what? Sorry. Uh, I was saying uh, not specifically like from CIP themselves, but like the GMs definitely. There was a a couple of them that didn't didn't like me or like the people we played with or whatever. It's very interesting. I think, I just think it's so interesting that, you know, uh, I don't know if you know this, but like one of the biggest failures in gaming is uh, sort of like esports teams are considered to like always be a loss. Like you can invest millions of dollars in them 
and you will just lose all of that money. And at the same time, and but still, people invest millions and millions of dollars in these stupid fucking teams like FaZe and you know whatever other thing you can think of that is just a massive waste of money. And at the same time, Hokuten has hundreds of thousands of real fans who are out there hunting for content about it. They're, wa they're watching a video about something that happened 22 years ago. And just no compensation, no nothing, nothing. I mean, that kind of thing isn't retroactive. Well, it's just so interesting to me that there's this massive thirst for, you know, content about this stuff that happened so long ago. And at the same time, there's no one who can put all those things together. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'll contact Pop All Vodka and see if they can sponsor me. Right. We need to get a Pop All Vodka sponsored Twitch stream that is also sponsored by Sipsoft. You know, at the very least, they should be buying you a computer so you can stream, you know? It just doesn't make any sense to me. When when Aries yeah. were, specifically, when Aries were said to me, oh, I can't stream because, like, my computer isn't good enough. How stupid is Sipsoft that they can't put two and two together to buy this guy a fucking gaming rig? You know? Uh, it's probably a cultural thing. I don't think they feel like they owe him anything for any kind of increase in their stock or like whatever from, you know, increased traffic because of someone watched the video. Well, think about all the new players and old players that Ares War would bring back into Tibia and make more money for the company tomorrow if he just was online streaming. You know, all the people that would be reintroduced to Tibia that would go back and end up buying fucking Tibia coins and shit. Like, they would, if they just sent this guy a $3,000 laptop, they would probably make, like, four hundred grand off of it. I mean, you're probably not wrong, to be <laughs> honest. But then it, it sets a precedence, too, that they have to, like, I don't know, they, they would get all kinds of people, like, wondering why they weren't picked or, uh, you know... Like current players, people who still like play the game consistently or have been playing it for a long time. Yeah. I, like, it, you know, Justin Precise or whatever is a good example of that. Like, he still plays, like, real Tibia to this day. Right. He's another example of somebody who is just like, he should be on a link to the Precise stream, should be on the front page of the Tibia website. Like, look, watch the old Legends play. This is what, like... Asmongold sits and talks shit about D Diablo 4 all day. You think he pays for a copy of Diablo 4? You know, like, <laughs> no, they, no. they send him a key immediately on day one. You know, it's like, the, and the new generation of influencers, they know the value of their influence. And the old generation just had all that value just robbed, just straight up stolen. That's, yeah, I mean, it was, uh, we just came up in the wrong era, more or less. I mean, the internet was like the Wild West when we were playing this game. It was like brand new. No one knew anything about it. Like, none of the hardware was good enough to, you know, <laughs> you couldn't stream back then if you wanted to. Yeah, that's interesting, is that, you know, it's hard to put a commercial on Galeon in 2003. You know, you can't fit an ad in there anywhere. But you are an ad, you know, every time when you kill Wurzel, that's the drama. That's everything, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I get what you're saying. I wasn't even involved in that, though. That's true. <laughs> well, I did, like, that? surprisingly little in that war because I was already, like, uh, I had, like, lost a lot of levels from, like, lag disconnects and just dying constantly because the connection to Germany wasn't the greatest. Oh, yeah. I remember you died from, like, 50 to 44 from, like, just lag events, right? Yeah. After a while, I, I was, like, just completely done. I think uh, Matt still had access to my character. He might have gone out and tried to fight a couple times, but <laughs> he was on, like, 56k dial-up, and he also just got wrecked. Made me look bad. <laughs> Listen, we don't talk about those things, okay? You're a valiant war hero, all right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, um, 
it's like I said in the, uh, the interview for the rainy video is basically my my biggest contribution to that war was the drop it like it's hot fucking uh, <laughs> broadcast. <laughs> Hey, well, from you know. from inside a PZ at Dark Mansion, by the way. <laughs> no, you are out on the front. You were in the vanguard, I think, is what you're saying. You're in the uh, on the front lines. I mean, I would have liked to have been. Uh, last question: How do we promote Slainville to the world? Uh, that's a tricky question. <laughs> uh, really, honestly, not. Too sure? <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, like, probably through, you know, discords of old guilds from Antica, stuff like that would probably be the most, I don't know, simple and effective way. Well, if you're listening and you're in an old discord from Antica, be sure to share this link into there and uh, the Slainville link and... Uh that kind of thing. But other than that, thank you very much. All right, well, that wraps us up. If you made it this long, you're a loony. But thank you very much. Please <clears throat> link, share with your friends, promote the Slainville, and Thank you. Thank you all for everything. Thank you, thank you, thank you.